well I thought we'd do a bee trick today and experiment with the beautiful colors from the Mikadol Brilliant Watercolor series. It's a 36 palette set and I'm going to use a disc 3 with the beautiful purples and burgundies and disc 2 with the beautiful greens. The discs are really handy, they stack one on top of the other and I'm going to be using the Roy Mac watercolor brush. It is a size 8 rigger brush. It holds the water well and it comes to a tip beautifully for this project. I'm also going to be using the cold press paper by Mikador itself and we'll be drawing the outline just with a mechanical pencil and an eraser if needed. I have also some paper towel and some water which will be relevant for the painting process. I will also be stealing a little bit of the olive colour from disc 6 um, which we'll use on the top of the beetroot and as you can see these discs are nice and slim, easy to use and move around. So ideally I have the outline drawn out on my paper. I've cut down an A3 size piece of paper and I'll be using the green paints firstly for the leaves. So I'll apply water using the brush and I basically just dip that brush into some water and rinse it off onto my paper towel and then I move on and proceed to pop that water onto the paper and let that paper absorb the water a little bit as I go. So I'm basically just bringing it to a point and applying the water onto the paper and just following those outlines. Just speeding things up a little bit. We're still placing that water onto the paper and to just get more dispersion of that water, I'm just using the brush on its side. And then for the finer details, I'm using the tip of this size 8 rigger. And that will help me get the water right into the tip and edge of the leaf. When you're happy with how much water you've placed on the paper, take it to a natural light source and just tilt the paper up and you should be able to see the water glisten on the paper. If there's too much water, just pop the paper down and take your brush and remove the excess. So I'm going to come in with my greens now. The first green is the apple green and I'm dropping that green straight onto that damp, wet paper and it will allow the color to glide over your watercolor paper. Just popping that brush straight into the palette. The brush is wet, the paper is wet. And then coming in with a little bit of the moss green now, and that is going to blend. Those two colors will blend together because the paper is wet. And then coming in with a little bit of sap green where the veins of the leaf are going to be. And that's marked with the pencil lines within the leaf. And again, just dropping in a little bit of this apple green, which is a beautiful, beautiful green, which will contrast so well with the purples that we're going to use with the beetroot itself. And then the sap green for a bit of pop on that leaf. And then just a little bit of a lighter touch with your colouring throughout some of these other sections of the leaves. And then the apple green again for its intensity. And just move that green around the wet area. And you're dropping it in and it's very, very random. And again, you're intensifying some of that color with the sap green where your veins will be. And then I'm just using the brush to just soften some of those edges and get into the areas that I didn't get into when I was dropping that color in. And then the hair dryer, just dry off the surface. And you should be left with a nice dry paper to touch there's no glistening on the paper, the paper is dry, the paint is dry. 
Now I want to come in and pop in some of the sap grain on the middle leaf that's curved and flicked up. So ideally I want to bring the brush to a point and just pop it into that sap grain and then carefully outline that middle lip of that leaf. And I turn the paper around to make it comfortable so that I can draw a line that is nice and precise just using the tip of the brush. And then I'm just following that sap green up and around the leaf. You don't have to do this, but it's a nice little touch to the painting. And then with a nice clean but moist brush, I'm just drawing that color into the white space. I'll just zoom in a little bit. And all you're doing is with that damp brush, you're blending in that color and blending it down into the leaf. Okay, so I'm going to remove disc two and replace it with disc three. And disc three has the beautiful purple and burgundy, fuchsia, coral, red and red. And I'll just start off by zooming in a little bit so that you can see the colors dance on the paper. Ideally, what we wanna do is we wanna wet the paper exactly the same way as we wet the leaves at the start. So we're bringing in the nice clean water onto the cold pressed paper. And I'm using the brush to section off a little square and that square won't have any water in it. And that will provide a highlight for our beetroot. And then I'm using the tip of the brush to get into those edges. And then I'm using the brush to just move that water in down the bottom of the beetroot. Just moving the water gently, a really light pressure on the brush, there's no need to press hard. And again, it's glistening in the natural light and that little square highlight's been left there. I'm going to come in with the burgundy first of all and I'm dropping that in just like we did with the leaves at the start. The paper is wet. My brush is damp and I'm going straight into that disc with the color. And again, just moving the water around, which allows the paint to flow around your paper as well. Dropping in a little bit of coral red and drawing out that color and softening those edges. And then dropping in that purple, it's a very rich dark purple and that will help deepen the colour and add the values that we need to darken this beetroot. And all I'm doing is just dropping that colour in and moving it around. And these colours will merge together to create a beautiful beetroot colour. Now I'm sneaking in the disc six and I'm taking a little bit of that olive and I'm placing that on the top of the beetroot and those colors will merge and give the top of the beetroot a little bit of a shine. The paper's still wet and I'm going in directly with that color. And then I'm just using my brush to soften up some of the edges. Hair dryer to dry it off. Okay, just zooming out. And the next step is to do the stems of the leaves. So I'm coming back in with disc three and I'm going to be using the burgundy and I'm using the brush with the tip and making my way down. And I'm not gonna go all the way down, but close enough to it. And then between each one, I just dip my brush into some water, repoint my brush, 
pop it into the burgundy and then make my way down. And then I'm just using that tip and this brush has quite long um, bristles so it does move beautifully on the paper. And then just a little bit of this purple, it's very intense so you don't need too much. And I'm just bringing that purple from the bottom upwards. So maybe a third of the way you want to bring that purple up and that'll deepen the values of that stem for you. And then bringing in a little bit more of that purple down onto the bottom of the beetroot and the right hand side. And then using the color that's already on the paper, I'm just dragging out the root and then just adding a little bit more burgundy and a little bit more purple. I'm taking away that palette and I'm coming in with the disc six. And I'm just popping a little bit more of that olive onto the top of the beetroot, which will now connect the purples that I've put in with the stem. And that's all gonna bleed one into the other. Then again, I'm just using my brush to move the paint around and to soften the edges. I'm taking that palette away and then coming back with disc three. And just applying a little bit more of those red tones and the purples. defining that beetroot now with a few lines. Again, I'm still dropping the color in. The paper is wet, it's not dry. I'm just zooming in there for you. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to just soften those edges up a little bit and drop in some water. And that helps the paint sort of disperse out and it also gives you a really nice texture to your painting. Now with a clean brush, I'm coming back into the purple. And my brush is pointed and I'm just going to use that to do the roots, the tiny little roots that are coming from the main one. And I've come in with the purple for those. And this brush does give a really lovely point. And to achieve that, you wet the brush, twirl it around onto your paper towel, and dip, dip straight into your palette. Just zooming out. Cleaning the brush and going into the colour again. Just adding a little bit more of that burgundy to deepen up things. Again, the paper is still wet. A little bit more of that purple. I'll just zoom in now and what I want to do is I want to soften the edges of that square that we've left and I'm just doing that by applying a damp brush and the tip around the edges. Okay so I want to work on the leaves now and I'm going to come back in with the tip of the brush and I'll be using the purple and the burgundy just to outline the veins. So these lines were the lines that were on the initial drawing and I'm just following through with those because you can see them through the watercolour green that we've popped on. 
and just working my way around and just popping in a little bit of that dark purple using the tip and making my way around with a little bit of that fuchsia and burgundy and then just going over those lines with the brush and it's just a damp brush and spinning the paper around just to get a better angle for my lines and then softening those lines with the damp brush nice and easy now I'm removing that palette and coming back in with disc 2 with the greens and this is just the bit where we're just going to add in a few of the darker values and play around with the moss green, the apple green and the sap green and just drop in some more colour. The paper is dry but my brush is wet and I'm just using the tip of my brush to drag down a little bit of that green onto the burgundy of the stems of the leaves. And working my way through using some of the apple green in between the purples and the burgundy of the veins that we've applied. Now your brush work here isn't precise, you're just dropping that colour in to give the leaves some texture. Now to finish off I want to come in with a little bit of controlled splatter which is just dipping my brush straight into the paint and then I'm using my finger to just tap and splatter some of that green through the leaves. So it's a lighter splatter. And then I'm going to wash out my brush and then come in with disc 3 and work in some nice round circles of the purple and this can get quite messy so you may want to put something underneath your paper and then in with the purple and again just use a splatter technique just around the beetroot itself And then I'm just going to use a little bit more purple within the beetroot just to darken up those values finally and soften up any of those edges. Then there you have it, one beetroot painted using Mikado for Artists Brilliant Watercolours. Thank you for watching.